Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, there's a lot going on in the land of Kim and Kanye, a land devoid of sanity or dignity or body proportions that make sense, but we're going to talk about them anyway. Kanye has been spotted on two dates with an actress named Julia Fox. She was in the almost unwatchably tense and terrible Uncut Gems. I mean, it was a good movie. It was just, you need a Xanax. Yeah, I mean, you need a lot of Xanax. Crush them up, snort them. Anyway. He was been on some dates with her right after saying he's like desperate to have Kim back. Come home. I miss you. Blah, 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 blah. What is he talking about? Meanwhile, Kim just unfollowed Miley Cyrus on Instagram right after her New Year's Eve special with Pete Davidson, after which she went and hung out with him. Hmm. What could be going on? Today, we're going to talk, we're going to do a little hybrid video. We're going to talk a little bit about an ex who claims to want you back, but then he's like moving on, like fucking a bunch of other girls, right? What does that mean? And also, what to do if someone is horning in on your man? How do you approach this? Do you confront her? Do you confront him? What do you do? We're going to break it all down. But before we get started, just a reminder, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at ShallonXO. Also, head on over to my website, ShallonLester.com. If you want to submit a question to me, get a little one-on-one help, I'm here for you. And if you want a video for yourself, a little personalized video, and you live in the U.S., head over to Cameo.com. Or if you live outside the U.S., go to Memo, M-E-M-M-O. And I got you, girl. It's a great present, little pep talk, whatever you might need me for. I'm here. Okay. So let's see. Kanye and Julia Fox. They were spotted out on two dates in Miami. So Julia Fox, because a lot of you guys are like, who is she? She was in that movie with Adam Sandler, Uncut Gems, and she plays like the mistress of this, of Adam Sandler, who's um, Howie. He's this like jewelry dealer. Anyway, and in real life, I guess she used to be a dominatrix. She comes across as a little, how do we say this politely? Trashy. I'm sorry. She kind of, she just does. It's like, it's not what she's wearing. It's just, you can just kind of sense it when you see it. And she seems a little like street, you know, she's recently was in the news because she was talking a whole bunch on Instagram about her deadbeat baby daddy. And have you seen this guy? I don't know if she has a Brooklyn accent, but have you seen this guy out at strip clubs and, you know, not taking care of his kid and blah, 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 blah. So she's one of those who like airs the dirtiest of dirty laundries. That to me is very like, like ghetto, you know, it's, it's very, ugh. anyway, Kanye was drawn in by this. I mean, she's got a fat ass and big boobs and that takes you a long way with most dudes. So they were spotted out on two dates and he's been out on dates with quite a few women lately. I mean, I think it's like number four. And in between all of these dates, and there's usually never more than one or two because how many hours would you want to spend at a table with Kanye West? I don't know. Some of you guys are like, he's a genius. I love him. I think his clothes are stupid and I think his music is now stupid. It didn't used to be stupid. It used to be great. And now I listen to it. I'm like, this is like Ross's music on Friends. Like, what am I listening to? But that's my opinion, right? So the world is made up of different opinions. But in between all of these dates with like models and who even knows, he's like begging Kim to come back to him. And have we not all been there? An ex who's like, I miss you. I love you. Weren't you fucking that chick named Tawny two nights ago? Literally happened to me. And her name was Tawny. With an I. And so it's hard to know what a guy's intentions are. I mean, on one hand, it's like, well, if he's single, who can knock the hustle? Like, why shouldn't he be out there doing all the things a single man is doing? I have no claim to, you know, we're not together. He can do whatever he wants. But at the same time, he ain't walking in like he talks it. You want me back so bad and yet you're boning half of Miami? Like... You're actively asking other women out on dates and you wonder why I don't want to get back together with you. You wonder why I can't trust you. (sighs) We've been there. What does this mean? Why does a guy do this? Simply put, he can't be alone. He can't be alone. Kanye does not seem like the kind of man who can govern his own life very well right? I don't know that he can like effectively go grocery shopping. And of course he's got assistance. He might not have to, but I think he is such, I mean, I think he's insane. And I think he's a narcissist 
And people like that, like, they need an audience. Like, they need a constant audience to, like, get their self-esteem from and to feel relevant. Otherwise, they're like a tree falling in a forest. Does it even make a sound if no one's here to, to hear it? Like, they can't abide that. One of my good friends, she recently went through a divorce, and her ex-husband, she thinks it happened, like, two months after they really called it quits. I think it happened, like, the day she said she wanted out, like, way prior to the actual split he started oh, new year same earring bullshit. fuck you know what talk about gems and uncut gems I, you have one job you just have to sit in my ear and not bother me while i'm filming you can't do it i was running errands all day you had no problem i sit down to film can't handle it anyway so my friend, yeah, he, this dude, her ex-husband started dating this chick he worked with and they're in like hyper speed, like meeting all the family and spending Christmas together. Now they're buying a house together. And it's been like eight, 10 months or something like that. And she's, my friend is like beside herself because she's like, this is just so crazy fast. And how has he moved on? I'm like, babe, he hasn't moved on. He can't be alone. There's a big difference big difference he's like slotting her into wife role it's like the lead actress dropped out we start filming tomorrow uh you there by the water fountain can you act no oh, fuck it come on we just gotta get you up on stage that's what it feels like when someone rushes something they're not over it they cannot be alone with their thoughts about how they ruined this relationship so they have to bring someone in a court jester to distract them so that they don't have to sit with those icky feelings. They're wallpapering over the previous relationship, right? Let's not scrape anything off. Let's not just have bare walls. No, no, no. Just as quickly as possible. Let's kind of pretend this never happened. It also means they have a very dim view of women. Like my friend's husband, he wants a sock folder and a laundry doer and a kid's lunch maker and a dog walker. He wants basically a free servant. Don't we all, bitch? By the way, if you ever watch this, you have too many teeth. Like, way too many. You look like a fucking tooth clown. I don't know what a tooth clown is either, but it, if, it's you. Anyway. So, when we look at it from that purview, when we step back, it's like, okay, he can't be alone. He has no real respect for women, and he's not over our relationship. Hmm, how much do I miss this man? What kind of man am I chasing? Is this someone I need to waste any time trying to unravel his motives? Because he's a tooth clown. So that is what I think is going on with Kim and Kanye, you know? And I, again, I don't think that warranted a whole video, so I'm stitching these two topics together. So I want to move on to Kim and Pete. <sighs> I just notice we're not talking about, you know, let's talk about it. Chloe and Tristan, since we're dipping our toe into this lake of fire. What do we say about Tristan at this point? You know, when he issued that bullshit apology on Instagram, Chloe, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve the humiliation and blah, blah, blah. If he is an honorable man, I mean, he's not. But if he decided to cosplay as one, he would leave her. I cheated on people before, like when I was in my early 20s. And I remember I was cheating one time on a good guy. And I just left. I left because I realized I'm not going to stop cheating. And I'm just going to erode this man for, for no reason. I'm just going to destroy him. And I need to do the one and only selfless thing that I can in this situation at this point, in this mess that I've made, is just leave, baby girl. Leave him in peace. Sometimes it's the kindest thing you can do for someone. It takes a lot of strength to walk away from someone who loves you and who's good, but you have to look yourself in the eye and say, this is never going to change. And you know what? They don't deserve this. So I'm going to do right by them and put myself emotionally in a bad place and miss them for their good. This is the, this is the self-sacrifice that they deserve. Will Tristan do that? <laughs> See, had he said in his apology, you know what, at this point, I'm bowing out of my relationship with Chloe. I can't do this to her. I, I now see what kind of person I am. And I have a long way to go. And I shouldn't be with anyone. And the last person I'm going to be with is someone I respect so much that she's my baby mom. That's the last person I'm going to stay with. It seems like the person I should stay with, but it's not because I want to hurt her the least. So I'm going to walk away from this. He didn't say that, though. 
I'm sorry. You're sorry now that the paternity results came in. Up until then, there were no real apologies. There was no real, oh, I understand her humiliation. Do you think she was only going to be humiliated if this baby was real? Even though you admitted in the suit and the depositions that you've been fucking this chick? Like, do you think she's only hurt because there's a baby? I'm sure that's catastrophically more hurtful. <sighs> Ugh. Can we just leave his group on penis in 2021? Please. Anyway, now let's move on to Kim and Pete. So, Kim unfollowed Miley on Instagram. Welcome, girl. I unfollowed her like eight years ago. So, welcome to the serenity. After Miley and Pete hung out post their New Year's Eve special. I mean, look at this picture, the two of them. They look like they just wandered out of the loony bin. Like, these are both adults. What is, what is happening? What is happening here? So this is what I speculate, you know, in my draconian little mind. I can, I can picture Kim getting the idea that Miley, now maybe she knows, because somebody's, some, Hollywood's like a high school, you know, like what, pe what we see is not the truth about a celebrity, you know, just like in every high school, you have the good girl who's actually a bitch, Reese Witherspoon, right? Like the drugged out guy, like all, all the different categories and everything. And if I had to guess the category Miley Cyrus is in, mm, I would guess she's in the category of you don't want to leave your boyfriend around her for too long, right? She's going to offer to get him high and then she's going to be twerking. She's got her tongue out, uh, that whole thing. She's still in her I have a vagina phase. We've talked about this before. It's a phase a lot of girls go through. Most of us go through it around 19 to 21. It's like, I've got a vagina and the whole world's got to know about it. I'm going to shave my head and be in the vagina monologues or I'm going to fuck the entire football team blah, 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 blah. or I'm going to twerk on stage. Miley... Woo, she's holding on to that stage. Bella Thorne is holding on to that stage. You know, there's a lot of celebrity women who are like, oh, you're in the vagina stage. Here we go. Miley is just riding that till the wheels fall off. I wouldn't want my boyfriend around her. I mean, I wouldn't want to be around her. And so I maybe Kim is like, it's very sus that they hung out together afterwards. Like, because Miley seems like one of those girls who's like, I'm a guy's girl. Like, <laughs> It'd be so funny if I just, like, sucked your dick. Like, wouldn't that be funny? Like, it's a funny joke if I just, like, fucked you. Right? And Pete seems about the same. Ah, it would be, wouldn't that be crazy? It's like, all our tattoos would just look like a Dalmatian as you're, like, sucking my dick. <laughs> I don't know why you'd fight over either one of these people, but this is where we're at. So I can see Kim being, like, Something happened, something shady, something not right, something sus is going on. I'm unfollowing her. I can also see Pete, who has borderline personality disorder, doing the thing that a lot of BPD people do, is they create a problem so that they can swoop in and solve it, thereby demonstrating their need to their partner so that they don't get abandoned. As we have said, BPD is unfortunate because their worst fear is being abandoned, and yet so much of their behavior is so off-putting and clingy and over the top that abandoned is exactly what happens. And it's like just this terrible self-fulfilling prophecy loop. But I don't care about Pete. I care about Kim. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I'm team Kim on this one. So I can also see Pete acting like Miley was coming after him or encouraging that situation and then telling Kim about it so that he could possess present himself as a really good guy. She was really trying to suck my dick, babe. But like, hey, I told her I'm dating the most beautiful woman in the world. You know, I love her. And I'm, we can go to the bodega. I'll go to Duncan with you and we'll get some scratchers. But I'm not going to fuck. And she didn't take it. Well, when I've had boys cheat on me, that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. They pre-gaslit me, right? They primed this stage of like, oh, these girls are always coming at me, but hey, I told them I belong to you. Guys come at me all the time. I don't need to tell my boyfriends that. It's obvious. It's obvious looking at me, being around me, knowing who I am. Yeah, dudes wanna fuck me. I don't need to point it out. I'm certainly not going to point it out to someone who would be hurt by that information, right? Like, I'm not trying to make my boyfriend jealous. If he doesn't already know my worth, 
No amount of me telling him is going to make a dent. Like either you see it or you don't. So maybe that's something Pete is doing. Maybe not. I don't know. But let's talk about what to do when a girl is coming for your man. Because. Now look, no girl can force a faithful guy to cheat. You know, no woman steals a man. They go to her, right? And it's easy, very easy to vilify the mistress. It is. But is it wrong? No, not always. Now, I'm not talking about a scenario where the chick doesn't know that this guy had a girlfriend. You know, like, guys lie. When I was cheating, I was lying. When I've been cheated on, he was shucking and jiving and lying. Excuse me. I had a friend whose husband cheated on her and literally told his mistress his wife was dead. She was not dead. It, it, it's just like, it, it still like chills me to the bone to think about it because that's how fucking datelines start, right? Oh, my wife's dead. Like, mm, she drowned in the bathtub. It was something like that. She was very much alive. But people will lie when they to get what they want. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a girl who's horning in on your man. <sighs> There's a few different ways to go about this. You know? There's... It depends. It depends on what this woman wants. Sometimes a girl comes after your man, and it's not about the man, it's about you. Right? When I've had my fans, I mean, I use that term loosely, slide into my ex-boyfriend's DMs. That wasn't about him. It was about me. It was about like fucking me over. It was a weird thing with me, right? So if it's about you, what she wants more than anything is engagement from you, not from the guy. She's trying to fuck over you and therefore she's she feels jealous of you and resentful and she wants to be you and she can't so she's going to destroy something you love and and thereby take it for herself and be more like you it's very weird so she wants you to acknowledge her as a rival and an equal and therefore the cruelest most malicious and hateful thing you could ever do to a woman like that is ignore her <laughs> I know, we talked about this in Evil Week, how to outlast the enemy. This is the whole theme. I'm not saying it feels good in the moment. It might not feel good in 10 moments, in 100 moments. It might always rankle you that you just didn't take it to the streets and break her fucking jaw with a pipe. I get it. I get it. But you're playing the long game here. She's reactive. She's animalistic. I want her attention. Not you. You're the eagle soaring above, looking down on everything. You are strategic, and most importantly, you are patient, my dear. You are patient. There is nothing so difficult in this world as non-reaction. It's the hardest thing in the world. Reactiveness is easy. It's literally what animals do, right? We aren't like that. We are a higher being operating on a higher plane. Let these other bitches act like animals. We don't. So if that's the case, you ice her out. She doesn't exist. Nope, 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 nope. But what if this guy is entertaining this and encouraging it? <sighs> Again, like there's just so many different like dynamics. So I dated a lot of pro athletes and I dated one of the best, the best <laughs> hockey player in the world. And girls were, I mean, literally throwing themselves at him constantly. And I remember asking one of my other wag friends, wags, like wives and girlfriends, I'm like, what do you do when like a guy, when chicks come after your man? She's like, you just have to act like you're the baddest bitch around. Like you're unbothered, you're unfazed. You're not even dealing with them. They're pigeons, you're the eagle. She didn't use that example, that's mine, but you know what I mean. And it's tough, but that that is a good directive. Like if you engage with this low class, you have thereby told them you're an equal. They're worthy of engagement. But like I said, what if the dude's encouraging it? You take it up with him and not her. No woman can make a faithful man cheat. No woman can get an uninterested man into her, right? He has to be game for it. He has to be game for it. it takes two to tango, right? She's not raping him. She's not like flirt raping him. So you go straight to the source. Be like, hey, the way you're acting to Miley is not appropriate. No, but it, there's nothing. Hey, 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 look at me. I don't care if you think my standards and my boundaries are crazy. They belong to me. You don't get to decide them. I do. If you think they're crazy, then do you think I'm crazy? Then why are you with me? 
if that's the case, go, go, walk out the door. It's right over there. Bye. If you do want to be with me, though, these are the rules by which this relationship will be governed. And hey, you have rules of your own. I'm, I want to hear them, right? I want us to all be on the same page. You are not to text her. You are not to hang out with her. I don't find it appropriate. I find it disrespectful. And I'm not tolerating disrespect. I'm also not your emotional parole officer. So I'm saying this once. I'm not going to nag you about it. I'm not going to go through your phone. I'm not going to check up on you. You're a grown man. And if you can't govern yourself in a way that shows me respect for me as a grown woman, then we don't need to be here. But if that's the way it's going to be, I'll know. You're not a great criminal. That's how you phrase it. These are my standards. Meet them or get the fuck out. And you need to know how he reacts. If he comes back gaslighting you, you're being crazy. She's just a friend from work. She just came over. <laughs> That's some data. That's some data. We know about gaslighters, right? If he comes back and is like, babe, there's nothing going on, but you're right. No, you're right. You're right. I can see, I wouldn't want you hanging out with Ryan Seacrest. Ryan, why did I come up with Ryan Seacrest? I'm just thinking New Year's Eve. I wouldn't want you hanging out with like Chris Evans after something and alone in his hotel room. Okay, so I get it. There was nothing going on, but I get what you're saying and I want you to feel comfortable in this relationship. So yeah, I could care less about mine. I don't fucking care, right? Or if he does care about her, it's like, look, I'm not willing to throw away this friendship with her or this coworker relationship. So next time we hang out, you're coming along. Or I'm not going to talk to her after I leave the office or whatever it might be, right? Or if she's drunk and needs a ride, I'm going to pay for her Uber, but I'm not going and picking her up at the bars. There's compromises to be made, but you need the data of him being willing or unwilling to make those compromises. Now, as I said, you can take it to the streets, right? First, you want to try those other methods. Ignoring, confronting your man because he's a huge part. Of, he's the gatekeeper, right? He, This chick wouldn't be a problem if he wasn't allowing her to be a problem. If he wasn't answering the text, following her on Instagram, like cruising by her office, right? <laughs> so what's he getting out of this? But yeah, we can, uh, we can take it to the streets, right? How can we do that? We talk a lot about war over here, don't we? And what is worth fighting for more than territory? Whether you're talking about a patch of farmland or a man, same thing, right? Wars are fought over land, and I will fight as many wars as I have to to defend what belongs to me. Now, I say that, but I also think <laughs> I will say it once to the guy. You don't respect me. You gaslight me. You tell me I'm being crazy. You refuse to back down. Bye. Because you know what? When I was cheating on someone and he had that conversation with me, I didn't back down either because I was cheating and because I didn't want to give up my side piece. So I was gaslighting him and I was carrying on doing whatever I wanted to do because I was 24 and an asshole. But I've learned from it. And it's helped me see that evil in other people. You know, it takes a thief to catch a thief. So what if we want to take it to the streets and we want to confront her? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this through in real time. If your aims be dark as night, fall like a thunderbolt. Who said that? Sun Tzu, Art of War. A, a better way to say this <clears throat> is... If someone attacks you, your response should be so overwhelming they're afraid to ever attack you again. Now, it's easy to take what I believe is the coward's way out. A text, a DM, an email. <laughs> if you're gonna send something digitally, make it from a lawyer, okay? I believe in confronting people IRL as much as possible. Why? Because it's gonna scare the living shit out of them. If they think you are bold enough to walk up to them at a party and be like, can you get your fucking tongue out of my boyfriend's ear, you herpes riddled skank? There's no telling what else you're capable of. It shows you're not afraid to fight. It's like the haka. Ah! Like, it shows this is my war dance. I will come up to you. I'm not going to do it in secret. I'm not going to keep our business private. Because people like this, they prey on us being 
too high on the high road. When they go low, I go even lower. I don't fucking think so. If I get into war mode and I'm like, no, I'm defending this and I'm shutting this bitch down, I do it in a big, big way. One of the reasons public humiliation works so well is because so many of these girls, they do this for fun. They do this to like get their ego needs met. People like Khloe Kardashian, who chronically dates dudes who are taken. Miranda Lambert, it's the same way. I used to do this. I told you when I was in high school, my nickname was The Mistress. That's not flattering, but I like to fuck with dudes, like not actual sex, you know what I mean, to like mess with dudes with girlfriends because I, I had a deficit of being wanted and I wasn't even at a zero. I was like overdrawn. I felt like overlooked by society and boys. So if I could get a guy who already had a girlfriend, that was like a net, a way bigger net gain. Don't worry, I'm not still in that place. <laughs> but again, it takes a thief to catch a thief. And so girls who do that, they're doing it for sport and they're doing it to get their ego needs met and they're, they're, they're doing it because they're a chicken shit. So if you can call them out and let them know, this might've been fun for you at first, let me show you how unfun this is about to get. Now I'm humiliating you at a party. Now I'm messaging you and CCing your boss and all your coworkers about fucking my husband. Now I'm commenting on your public Instagram. Now we're in the streets. Is this fun now? Is this fun slithering around the shadows trying to get something? No. But like I said, you have to do it big and you do it once. Once. Why once? Shalom, but what if she keeps coming? Then that's the time you walk away. Because look, look what you've done. Look what you've done to this point. You've ignored, hasn't helped. Most importantly, you've told your boyfriend about this, right? You have said, hey, this is a you and I relationship. Why are you letting an interloper into this dynamic? What do you want? Do you want two women fighting for you? That's really not what I fucking do. I fight over mozzarella sticks and money. I don't fight over your ass. Then you've tried to take it to her. If none of these avenues are yielding an end to the problem, your boyfriend is the problem, right? It's actually not the girl. It's your boyfriend. Because he should be like, I'm shutting this down. You shouldn't even have to get to the point where you have to go after this chick. You shouldn't. He should be like, get the fuck off me at a party. Like, get your tongue out of my ear. Don't text me. Don't do this. If he's not, you know what he is, baby girl? He's just a dick who likes having two girlfriends. Oldest story in the book. Nothing unique there. And why on earth would you fight for someone like that. I know it's easy. I know. I know it's easier said. Like you can, you can think it and you can know it. As I'm saying this, you're like, I know that. But I don't feel it. You don't have to feel it right this second. I know. We don't feel amazing going into the gym on January 1st, trying to lose those 30 pounds. I don't feel like I'm a gym person. I know that. But you're at the gym. And you're putting one foot in front of the other and you're fucking doing it and you're learning how to work the adductor machine and you don't feel like a gym person today and you might not tomorrow, but maybe in 10 visits, oh, I feel a little bit more comfortable here. And then in 30 visits, you're like, this is my house, right? You have to just keep like zombie walking through a behavior and then it does start to feel real. You can't wait for it to feel real and then do it. And this is the same with dudes. Even... If you don't feel like I should leave this person, but I love him. No, 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 no. There's a time when you have to turn that heart off and you got to go to logic. Okay, this, this part, this thing in here, this isn't helping me. I got to go up here. What would I tell my friend to do? What would Shallon tell me to do? You've tried, you've communicated, you told someone what you want. So if you realize you've done all the things that you can and now that you're in a really corrosive place in your relationship and seeing the writing on the wall and you seem to be the only one fighting for this relationship, it's time to walk away. It's time to walk away. Position yourself as the one he needs to chase. Because right now, maybe he's chasing that other chick and she's giving him this thrill and this excitement and this hunt. You can give that to him too. But first, you've got to get gone. He can't miss you if he hasn't lost you. I want to know your thoughts about Miley and what kind this is, this is the world we're living in. Um, children are wearing masks to school and we're talking about Kim Kardashian, Miley Cyrus fighting over the same guy who isn't a Hemsworth. What a time to be alive. We're gonna be back in a few days with some more videos. I swear to God, I'll look better. I'm so sorry. I look horrible. I'm, I'm so sorry. I love you guys so much. I'll see you later, Shalligators.